Gojo Satoru versus the big three. Yo, I'm more. Oh, brother. This is honestly going to be one of the more fun popular topics I do, as it'll give me time to explain why Gojo is not as strong as people think, along with going over how strong Jujutsu Kaisen is in general. Since not only do we have the Gojo Glazers, but we have people who think that Jujutsu Kaisen unironically caps at Mach 3. If y'all want versus battles related with Gojo or just any characters you'd like to see scrap in the next one, let me know down below. Oh Let's not God. waste any more time, ladies and gentlemen, and just get into why this man Gojo sucks. I'm just kidding. Kinda. Now, now, Gojo Satoru is regarded as the strongest modern sorcerer who's known for his infinity ability. Whoa, I learned. What is... what's infinity? Well, viewer, I'm glad you asked. Infinity is essentially Gojo creating a space between him and his opponent where the closer they get to him, the further the distance will be. And he has this on passively. Originally, he didn't, but then he trained to have it on passively. And this is why people find Gojo to be so OP or is regarded as one of the strongest anime characters ever because you can't even hit bro however he can't hit people while having this on as the closer they get the more distance it creates so he's gonna have to turn it off if he wants to do any significant damage to the big three along with this he has abilities like red and blue which destroy and pull anything towards its way along with hollow purple which is a combination of red and blue which destroys anything in its path on a molecular level but that's not even his best ability which is the infinite void domain expansion you see if gojo gets his domain off he's gonna essentially have a guaranteed hit with his infinite void and this allows gojo to overload information into his opponents and incapacitate them completely which none of the big three if i'm being honest have an answer to if gojo can somehow get this off as for how strong gojo himself is well he is just straight up stated to be the strongest modern sorcerer more than likely upscaling from characters like yuki and akari if you think gojo doesn't scale to yuki and akari well um Go talk to the author, not me. Anyways, he should upscale from characters like Yuki, who was able to create a perfect sphere black hole, which required energies that could destroy even planets. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but to be honest, this is the only kind of good feat in JJK. Everything else is basically just saying, well, Dagon can create an island and Jogo can create a mountain with their domain expansions. Which I mean, for Gojo, it doesn't really matter, but domains themselves are somewhat of a hacks ability, more so than just straight up AP. But you know, I'm gonna get those nerds in the comments. Well, domains are actually created from the user's cursed energy, and obviously the cursed energy should scale to the user. Yeah, 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 I get it. Point is, this is the best feat in JJK, so you know what? I'm just gonna give Gojo the benefit of the doubt here. And like I said earlier, he should upscale from Hakari, who's able to avoid a point blank lightning blast to the face by sacrificing his arm. And calculations have this feat at over Mach 4000 or in the massively hypersonic plus range. And the planet calc might be pretty shaky, but honestly, this tier of power might not even be inconsistent for at least Gojo and Sakuna, since it's said that Sakuna can destroy the world. For this video, again, I'm going to be giving Gojo the benefit of the doubt here, as it doesn't really matter. Now, when talking about the big three and their scaling, I feel like it's very cut and dry, especially when regarding their endgame level powers. In both One Piece and Naruto, we have characters who Luffy and Naruto would both go on to surpass, who are capable of destroying planets to maybe even reaching those star level tiers of power. Power. Specifically, Old Whitebeard and One Piece who'd be at least relative with Gear 5 as he can fight Kaido, another Yonko, and it's said that when the Yonkos fight, it's not going to be an easy battle regardless of the outcome. And the One Piece world, at best in my opinion, is the size of a small star, which if we take at face value, he would be in that tier. So I'd say Luffy is more than likely in that large planet to maybe even star level tier of power. And in Naruto's case, we have half of the Ninetales supposedly having enough power to destroy the world, and obviously not only could Naruto harness the full half of the nine tails but even another half after the war and he also has six pass sage mode which on its own is just tiers above the nine tails in power and obviously we have baron mode which is even stronger than that naruto while barely having any chakra body slams momoshiki who's able to absorb the stars and celestial bodies within kaguya's dimension as for the last member of the big three we haven't discussed about that being ichigo i mainly use a calc from the bleach movie that ichigo would power cliff hundreds of times over but i don't really think that's necessary here instead I'll just say like Naruto and Luffy, he's around that planet to star level tier through upscaling from beings like Yamamoto who can destroy the entire soul society within a very short amount of time. This same soul society containing dozens of stars and Ichigo would go on to cliff him and the verse aside from Yuha pretty badly. So all three members have scaling that can put them in that star level tier of power, but what about their speed? 
Well, funny enough, I do believe all three fighters are in a similar tier of speed as well. I won't get into specifics because that's not the point of this battle, but just know all three at the very least should be combating and reaching at speeds faster than the speed of light. And no, not traveling at the speed of light like half of you motherfuckers get confused, I mean combat and react at the speed of light. Luffy, Naruto, and Ichigo have all evaded light speed attacks before their big transformations or even when the power cliffing began in their respective series. Because funnily enough, all three verses have crazy power cliffs around the later parts of the series. So given their transformations and multipliers of said transformations, they should all be faster than light. As for their abilities, Luffy's main notable ones are Gear 5's Toon Force power, his advanced hockey that allows him to negate durability, hit through defenses without even touching his opponent, and see into the future. Blunt attacks for the most part don't work on him due to his body being made of rubber, and Luffy himself in Gear 5 can grab intangible things like lightning. And if opponents are far weaker than Luffy, then he could just flex his Conqueror's aura and knock him out. As for Naruto, well his main abilities pretty much consist of him jumping his opponent with Shadow Clones, Spammer Sengon, and Roshan Shuriken, which ignore durability and that's about it but after the war he has shown the ability to use things like magnet and lava release which would allow him to incapacitate his opponents along with having things like precog with sage mode can resist mind hacks regeneration and other chicken nugget things like having all five basic chakra natures he does have a lot of other crazy abilities but these are the main ones to know and Ichigo, well, he has Getsu Gatensho and can affect your soul on an atomic level, and has Getsu Gatensho and can affect your soul on an atomic level. Seriously though, that's all about you really need to say for Ichigo. Oh, and all three can fly like Gojo, which is kind of cool, I guess. Now, as for how the fight would go, regardless of Gojo's opponent, it really doesn't matter. Not only does Gojo get completely outclassed here in stats by all three of the members of the big three, but all three also have a way to beat Gojo. And like Gojo, they don't even have to touch him. You see, if Gojo were to try and attack Luffy and Ichigo, if they were to just flex their spirit aura, they pretty much just crumple Gojo on the spot. Luffy would do it with conquerors, while Ichigo would just do it with spiritual pressure. Meanwhile, Naruto could harm Gojo by using Frog Kata, as it allows Naruto to freely manipulate nature energy, which is just energy all around Naruto. So it would be just him throwing a punch like how he did in the Pain Saga, only now it would just one-shot Gojo. He's not fast enough to get his domain off, and even if he somehow gets off Hollow Purple, Naruto and Ichigo can just smack that away. While Luffy would just weave this with his Future Sight and hit Gojo with an advanced Conqueror's Punch. Gojo unironically loses to two out of the three members by shitting himself, while the other one just up cuts the air and one shots him i'm sorry for the jujitsu kaizen fans who came to this video thinking that gojo was just gonna be universal have inaccessible speed and just body slam all three of them unfortunately that is not how it works around here i am not biased and i'm powerful so gojo gets body slammed stay mad and subscribe if you are new to the channel and want more versus battle content goodbye